Hello some people hope you are all doing well. Today our agenda is how we can execute the exceptions from Apex unit testing classes. What it actually means, suppose you have a try and catch block in your main Apex class and I will demonstrate how you can execute the catch block that means the exception block from your Apex unit testing class. Alright. So if I hover to the Apex developer guide, this is the official best practices recommendation for the apex unit testing classes here they mention to always handle all exceptions that are caught instead of merely catching the exceptions what it actually means you have to try to always handle the exceptions in your main apex classes it might be time consuming or it can be difficult but it's not impossible right so here are three primary ways how we can execute the exceptions from our apex unit testing class the first way is skip passing the required field okay so i will demonstrate it first of all here you can see this is our main class the account controller data it receives an account from other method call okay and it tries to insert the account if the account is an insider successfully it throws an exception and i have put a just a random line in here so that I can realize or that the exceptions in is handled okay so what I am gonna do th this is the test class for this account controller data class and first of all I gonna initialize initialize an account account sc without name so I, I guess all of you know that the account name is a required field for the account object and if you don't put the account field in your account object uh, this initialized object then it will throw an exceptions right make sense so in a try block I gonna account controller data dot ac this one this method ac insert ac insert and I gonna pass this ac without name and in the catch block I gonna catch the exceptions you, you should also catch exceptions from your apex unit testing classes I just gonna debug is error errors e dot get messes all right And I'm not putting any system.azard, but you should and must always put system.azard at the end of your Apex unit testing class because our uh, main focus is on the how we can uh, execute the exception from our unit testing. That's why I'm not putting emphasis on the system.azard, but you should always use the system.azard equal or the or that system.azard. Okay, so I will just deploy it. Yes, it successfully deployed and I gonna just recap a bit what I did here here a class and a method AC insert it receives an account and inserts it but what I'm doing from test class I'm initialize an account without name the name is the required field for an account object and I'm trying to pass that name to the AC insert method and the method will try to insert it and it will see there's no name no name on the name field then it will throw an exception makes sense right so if i go to the developer console test new run this is our test class account controller data test and this is a test method test ac if i run it here you can see the coverage is 100 percent and uh voila the exception is handled successfully because the line number 9 is executed that means the try actually failed then the code went to the catch block and the exception is successfully handled so you have handled the exceptions from the apex unit testing class so our first point is done if you have any confusions or recommendation or question about it you can just put it on the comment section all right so let's move to our second one forcefully cover exceptions <laughs> it it might sound bit threatening or a bit weird 
So let's see how we can actually forcefully cover exception from our Apex unit testing classes. I'll just close those and this is our forced one. This is our forced class. I'll split them right. Okay. So this is the main class account controller forced. What I'm going to what I'm doing here just some random codes no DML it's just some comment and I'm trying trying to declare a string and in the try block <laughs> I'm checking if the running is running test that means if the apex unit testing is running and if it's running then just throw a new or a handle exception okay and after that I'm just catching exception okay so it it may be a bit weird or looking bit uh, like what can I say a bit hack solution but if you are at your last resort there's no way to execute your exception block from your apex unit testing block then you have to just do it it's not the best practice or the recommended way but if you have no option you just have to do it right so we are just forcefully if the test class is running we just forcefully throwing an exception so let me just uh, design the apex unit testing class first of all i'm just gonna give a try account controller forced dot ac insert and i don't need to pass any parameter since it doesn't receive any parameter right and uh, i will catch catch exception e system dot debug error is e dot get message right and I gonna deploy it and I'm also I gonna not write the system dot hazard but you should always do right system dot hazard or equal whichever more logical for your implementation and I'm gonna deploy it yes it's successfully deployed so I just quickly run through once more suppose you have a scenario where you can actually can't execute the exception block then you are forcefully saying if the test method is calling this apex class then just throw exception that's it right if the test method is calling this class then just throw a exception that will cover your catch block right and if i go to the developer console i'm closing the previous one new run account controller forced test and the test ac method i'm gonna run it here you can see the account controller forced had 100 percent of coverage so whenever i'm calling it from our apex unit testing class it's throwing an exception and the exception sending it to the catch block and on the 13 number line right the 30 number line is whether to check the exception is handled or not so the exception is successfully handled so this is a scenario where you can forcefully cover the exceptions from apex unit testing class this is your last resort right you have no other ways then you should probably do it forcefully cover the exception so this is our last one to run as a user context without access what it actually does or the way is uh, suppose you don't have permission or a an user or a user doesn't have permission to a specific field or object or something then you are you're gonna run your apex unit testing class as that user so that your apex main class throws an exception all right so let me hover to our main class this one the account controller user and this one the boilerplate for the unit testing class i gonna split right so let's see what we are going in doing in our main class we are initializing an account okay and we are checking if there is access creatable access and if so then we are initializing the account with the name it's just a random name and we are trying to insert the account if not we are just 
catching any exceptions or throwing any exceptions, right? So, what I'm gonna do from my Apex unit testing class, I'm gonna create I'm gonna create an user which user doesn't have access to the account class. I mean the account object. If the uh, user doesn't have access to the account object, then he actually can't. He actually can't enter this if right. It will uh, it won't satisfy his uh, request right. So if so, the account field won't be initialized the account name field won't be initialized and as a result the try will be failed and the exception will be thrown i hope i am clear to you so i'm gonna just uh, do the implementation of the unit testing class first of all i can take um, an string minimum user sorry minimum this is a Salesforce default user, minimum access user. Okay, uh, this this <coughs> user, this profile has the minimum access in your Salesforce org. I'm just declaring the name in a string. I will use it later on. Uh, let me just see once more if the naming is correct. Minimum access. Yeah, I, I think it's correct. And what I'm gonna do? I gonna uh, bring the profile ID for the minimum access user id name i'm not following any convention because it's not about the convention so i'm just writing all in a single line where name name should be minimum s and i'm wanting its id okay so what i'm doing here I just declare a string and put the name for the minimum access profile Salesforce. This profile has the minimum access in the Salesforce and I'm querying the ID of that minimum access profile and putting it on the IDP. Alright. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put a I'm gonna create a user. So let me just copy and paste it because it's uh, not I don't think I need to explain this. I'm just initializing an user in here. Let me just fix it. I've just initialized a user and the profile ID is the minimum access profile in here. Okay. That means the ID we have got here, that profile is assigned to this user, USR. All right. So, if I go next, now I have to run the test class as this user, USR. So, how we can do that? We have to write system dot run as USR. Then I want to write try account controller user. I want to write user dot AC insert. So I'm calling this method, just I'm calling this method in ac dot insert, right? And afterward I have to catch catch exception e system dot debug error is just I can write e dot get messes. So that's it. I'm gonna just try to deploy it. Yeah, it's successfully deployed. So I will just quickly go through once more. So this is our main Apex class. What I'm going uh, trying to do, um, initializing an account and uh, initializing the name field with a string and trying to insert the account and catching the exception. But from the Apex test class, what I'm trying to do. I'm getting a profile with the minimum access which doesn't have access to this account object and uh, I'm creating a user with that profile and I'm running the apex unit test class as that user all right so what gonna happen when I run it as that user that user won't be having access to this account also this account field that means 
this line on be executed the initialization of the name field on be executed as a result there should be an exception thrown so for verification let's go to our developer console test new run account controller user test test sc run I can see there's a red mark in here uh, the list has no row assignment I think I did some mistake on the string let me check once more yes I did some mistake on the string uh, sincere apologies so I will redeploy it okay let me rerun it test new run user controller test test ac yes it successfully ran and you can see the coverage is 87 percent yes uh, this is working as we expected we have run the test method as the minimum access profile in salesforce which is a default profile in salesforce with the minimum access given and that profile doesn't have access to the account field neither account object that's why the name field wasn't initialized and whenever the main class tries to insert the account it couldn't because the name field the required field wasn't there that's why it throws the exceptions so you can see the 14 number line was covered so i hope i made it clear to you how you can execute the apex unit testing class and the exception blocks from it so uh, this is the three primary ways I know as of now if you have some more suggestion or if you want to add some more ways please put it on the comment section and I hope you have enjoyed the session and I will be giving the code links in the description box of this video and if you have suggestion or you want to see any videos or any topic in future you can just put it on the comment thank you for watching the video goodbye have fun